Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'll be teaching you how to make a simple automatic blueprint crafter which means it will swap out the blueprints that are needed to build something once you have enough of that item it will take the blueprint back out and load any other blueprints that you need okay so we've got our power we have a box for the blueprints we have our workbench with a crafter we have a box where the end crafted item will end up in we also call this the buffer box and there's a locker which I can show you later so to start with we're going to need to load up some blueprints and some materials to craft the items I'm just going to do some keep it simple we'll start with three blueprints you this system can work with as many blueprints as you like you could have 20 if you wanted it'd get pretty complicated though uh, with the amount of components uh, we'll just do three and we'll just put a thousand lever in there which will be enough so first of all we need to put our storage adapter on the box and we need to feed the blueprints and materials into the crafter so we're going to need one conveyor which will be for the lever we're going to need one conveyor per blueprint so another three blueprints we're going to need to uh, obviously split this because we don't have enough inputs um, so we're going to have to use two splitters so we'll just go on the output janky wiring I'll we'll just try and get it through quick for you okay now each of these blueprints in here we want to set up the relevant conveyor for each blueprint so we type in hide we have the hide vest now you choose the blueprint icon here and that will look for the blueprint so let's apply that we have the hide shorts or pants and we have the hide poncho this final one, this is what we load up the autocrafter with, the materials. Uh, the maximum we need is 20 for the poncho, so we'll do a max of 20, and then that will transfer 20 at a time. And we'll just feed that one as well. Now we want to combine these all back down again. Uh, well, just the blueprint ones. Um, so this feeder here is obviously going to feed the materials to the auto crafter so we'll just put that straight into the in and we're going to convert these three outputs for the blueprints down and these are going to feed the blueprints in okay so this is our blueprints in circuit we now want the materials out and the blueprints out circuit. So we're gonna need, again, we're gonna need one conveyor to take the finished uh, crafted items out. So I'll just put one there. And then we're gonna need one conveyor per blueprint that we want to take out. Again, we're gonna need to split this signal. So we'll just put this here. So from the blueprint out, on the crafter, we're going to the splitter and we'll feed the three conveyors. Again, we need to set these up for the blueprints, one for each, so the hide vest, the hide pants, and the hide poncho. Now the industrial out feed the items that have uh, been crafted. We don't need to set anything up in this conveyor. It will literally just pull anything that is crafted in here, which is what we want it to do. So that can just stand, stay as normal. We now need to combine these crafters back down again to go back into the blueprint box. So we'll just do that. We'll just go up here for now. I'm just gonna go all the way back and back into the blueprint box. So we have the 
circuit that takes the blueprint out and feeds the crafter and then we have the circuit that takes the blueprint out and puts them back into the blueprint box so that's the first stage again for every blueprint you would need another conveyor so free it's free conveyors per blueprint in total so you just keep adding them obviously this is laid out to just make it easy to explain but you'd be trying to fit this into a probably a one by one um, if you do it very neatly you can make it pretty uh, good electrical room um, so let's get a storage adapter so this is gonna be our box where the items end up in so with that we can go straight from the output into the box and now what we're going to need is how do we tell the blueprints to either load or remove and that's done via filters on and get it right it's uh, conveyors again so it's one conveyor per blueprint or per item so three and then what we do is again we're going to need to split this so i'll just stick that there and we're going to need to split this signal so that'll go again ignore my uh, pipe in I'll just do this quick so from the output of the box which holds the items we have three conveyors now these conveyors will not pump anything anywhere all they are there for is as a filter and to basically read what's in this box and then what we do is we want one for each item so this time not the blueprint but the item itself and what we're going to say is if there is one of these items in this box um, that will do the next part so hide pants again max one and hide poncho now if you wanted uh, let's say I don't know 10 of each item you just change this to 10 okay now we need to do the electrics so we'll just grab a branch we'll just stick that in there we'll go from the output to feed the branch we need to work out how much power we need now we don't need power permanent power for the blueprints removers and adders that's because the power for those comes from the item checker conveyors over here so the only power we need is one for the lever uh, conveyor there one for the auto crafter one for the material or item mover and then these three so one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll put out a six power. Let's check I've got that right. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Right, next we need to add the power. Now conveyors, when you first turn them on, they're in an off state. They do remember their state unless there's a server restart. So I'm going to temporarily add power and turn all the conveyors on just to get the uh, them remembering that they need to be on and then we'll wire it properly. So uh, we're going to need, we will need power into this one which is the material mover and we'll just turn that on. Um, and then I'm just going to get these all turned on. So I'm just going to turn them on. And then I'm going to remove that power. Okay, and then this is now going to feed this one. The, uh, is this one? the power in, and again, I'm going to just feed these ones just to, so I can turn them on. So I'll just turn them on. Okay, and now I'm going to remove the power for these. Right, and then the power for this will then feed these ones. Just go on the pass through here, use the power in, pass through, power in. And then finally, we're gonna feed the auto crafter, power in. Okay, so turn all these on. Okay, so how it works is right now these conveyors here which are the item checkers they are looking to see if there is a maximum of one hide vest in this box that they're attached to currently there isn't 
there's no hide vest in this box then the filter fail is on and it's sending one power the filter pass has no power if there was one uh, hide vest in here at least then the it would switch over and the filter pass would send a power so we're going to use these filter passes to actually turn on the conveyors which add or remove the blueprints so what we'll do is the filter fail for the hide vest i'll do that in green to make it easier we're gonna send that to the blueprint feed because we want to feed the hide vest blueprint so that goes into the power in and the filter fail uh, filter pass sorry if it does have the item then we want to remove the blueprint and so we'll power the uh, remover and then we'll do the same for the other one so the hide shorts we'll turn that on and if it doesn't if it does have the hide shorts then we want to turn this one on and lastly the hide poncho so if it doesn't have the hide poncho then we will turn it on It does have it, then I'll take it out. Okay, so that's the circuit all set up. So if we check in here, you can see the blueprints have actually already moved across into the auto crafter. Um, there we go, so they're in there ready to go. So if I turn this auto crafter on now, it's going to start crafting. Now one thing to note is it won't craft just the one, even though this will tell everything to remove the blueprint after it sees one in this box. Because of the speed that it works, by the time it sends the signal to take the blueprint out, the auto crafter will have already started crafting a second version. So you normally end up with two of each item. So you can see that one's just gone. So it's now crafting a second hide vest. The hide vest blueprint will now be removed. There you go but it's already crafting a second one. So if you did want 10 of say the vests in this box or whatever you're crafting, you'd probably want to put one less. So you'd probably put nine in the filter here. You would just put max nine, but you know you're going to end up with probably 10. So because there's a max of one in here now, one or more, this now has filter pass one power, you see, because the filter has been passed. Um, its requirements have been fulfilled and so that now is sending power to the remover um, here which has taken out the blueprint and that has put it back into the box it's also done the same now for the shorts because the shorts are now in here there's a pair of shorts um, and now it's going to do the poncho So that blueprint will disappear now. There we go. So that'll be back in the box. There's all three blueprints. And so if I get rid of, let's say, hide, there is now no longer a max one of the hide vest in there. And so it will load the hide vest blueprint back up again. There it is. And it will start crafting them again. So it's as simple as that. So all you do is if you want more blueprints, you want more things being crafted, then you just add more conveyors. Um, you know, you can get pretty complicated. You know, you could have a full kit with either six or seven conveyors. Now, of course, that's going to be times three because you need the removers, the adders, and the item checkers. So you'll end up with like 21 conveyors just for a full kit. And that's not including your guns, bullets, meds, and uh, everything else that goes along with it. Um, now, lockers. If you'd like to put this, let's say you have made a full kit in here and you'd like to put it into a locker. What you want to do is add your lockers up like that. You're going to need a, another conveyor for the locker. Just stick that there. You're also going to need um, the power for it. I'm going to have to take this craft the power off. I'll just 
just take this pass through to feed this conveyor and I'll take this one back to feed the conveyor. Um, we're also going to need another feed out now so because I need to now also feed this from this box I'm going to have to add another splitter so I'll just sort that and um, we'll just uh, how can we quickly do this so I'll we'll just add another splitter I know this is very uh, janky we'll just take that one out we'll use that one to feed this one Right, so there we go. So now I've split it all out and now we're feeding this one as well. We'll turn that one on and we'll pipe this. First of all, let's um, give it some filters. So what we want to do here is whatever your kit is, you want one of each item of the kit. So high pants, poncho. You want to put maximum of one. That's very important. If you don't, it will constantly fill your lockers with the same item. So you're going to have like 10 ponchos in one locker. The other thing to remember is by default it says any item which means it will constantly transfer any item into any location. You want to choose require all. What that means is it will only transfer items if it makes up whatever is in here. So now if we pipe that into the locker and then link the lockers up, each locker acts as its own storage section. You can see it's just transferred those kits instantly in. So because we put required all it knows Per storage section it requires one of each and it won't put any more than that in now because we've just emptied the buffer box here it's now going to load I just got to turn that back on again it's now going to load all the blueprints back up again it already it's already done it and it's going to start crafting again because this box is now empty so this is why we call it the buffer box because it's a go between between your other boxes lockers and uh, the most common setup you're going to have is lockers by your front door if you put a key lock on you can literally you know grab a kit quickly run out to the fight when you come back again there'll be another kit ready to go you won't have to spend ages looking in different boxes so it's um if you can pull this off and get it set up in your base it's a game changer for winning fights um i think that's about everything again if you want more if you want to add more you need one conveyor to check the item has been crafted in the buffer box you want one conveyor to take the blueprint out and one conveyor to put the blueprint in and you can literally make this system as big as you like um, and that's it that's the simplest way you can possibly do it um, it'll be fun trying to cram it all into a tiny space um, but it is doable and um, you can even put them on your ceilings, on your floors, whatever you need to do. But it's well worth doing and um, it will make you get to the fights a lot quicker. Okay, any questions just leave a comment and I uh, hope that helps people figure out the blueprint swapping. Because um, I know it can be quite tricky trying to figure out how to do it. I know in Wiljam's latest video he uh, come across that problem himself. Okay, cheers, bye.